that's uh, one thing that I learned a while ago when I got into upland hunting and training dogs and all that stuff is it doesn't matter how well prepared your dog is or how much time you spend training your dog. If you can't actually hit the bird that they find for you, it doesn't do a whole lot of good, right? <laughs> Woodcock. Ah, damn glove. Grouse. So we can get our dogs up to par and get them all trained up and ready to go. But if you can't hit anything, it's kind of unfair to the dog. And we don't like failing our bird dogs, now do we? <laughs> no! I hate failing my bird dog. Son of a, I didn't expect it to come up that far. So up until now, I've primarily just done what we all do, just go out and practice a couple months before uh, hunting season. And it tends to work out pretty good. You know, I'm not the worst shot, I'm not the best shot. I guess the best way to describe my shooting over the years is streaky. When I'm on, I'm on and when I'm off, I can't hit anything. And so one thing that I, I really wanted to do this year was learning more about how to become a better shot, more, a more consistent shot, I, I really should say. That started with getting my, my gun fitting, getting the gun dimensions that fit my body size, my structure, how I do my mount, all that fun stuff. And so uh, linking up with Nick Larson from the Bird Shop podcast, he advised me to do a gun fitting with Dell Whitman. I think most people are, are familiar with, you know, this idea that most of us, myself included, grow up shooting shotguns of a standard dimension, off the rack dimension. And that's mainly just due to accessibility and necessity, right? I mean, it's just a custom gun or and or a gun fitting is not the first thing that that comes up for for young hunters and and people just starting out but eventually for some people it becomes uh something of interest and something they want to explore and and that's kind of that's kind of where we come in to help facilitate that and you know my my curiosity has has been sparked by conversations with Dell throughout the years and you know I'm like uh, I'm on a, a little bit ahead of you on the journey but it was out of a very similar motivation after getting my bird dogs and like really leaning into figuring that side of things out. I was like, okay, I got to Now I got to learn how to close the deal for these, for these bird dogs. So what you're going to see in this video is the process because I had never done it before. I didn't know what to expect. And so we wanted to kind of show you guys what it's like, the type of information you're going to get, because it's more than just getting dimensions on your shotgun. You're also getting kind of instruction on your form or how to best mount your shotgun and, and why your head placement is so important. There's a lot more that goes into it and so I hope you guys enjoyed the journey and, and learning more about the process as I did. So as soon as you mount the gun if you have a proper gun mount wherever that bead is wherever those barrels are wherever you're looking that's where the pattern goes. And that's in the simplest terms what we're trying to do here. That is when I bring it up my line of sight is already in line. I'm not having to line. move or adjust no. the shotgun yep. to bring it, it in line. You're not having to sight the gun in with your physicality the gun fits you so that when you mount the gun, wherever you're looking, that's where the pattern goes. You don't have to aim the shotgun, i.e. move your head around or adjust the stock around. So there's a brief demonstrational phase, which is gonna um, revolve around some foundational techniques that are gonna be good for pretty much any type of you know, wing shooting you wanna do that's more based on the British style, instinctive style of shooting, but they're foundational techniques that can um, permutate into any other style of shooting. We'll do some things in here as far as what I refer to as the dry fitting portion of the fitting. And that's where I'll start to roughly assess your dimension. I'm gonna be, you know, looking at your eye dominance. I'm gonna be roughly assessing length of pull, drop at heel, and basically getting you roughed in. Once we're comfortable with that, then that's kind of phase two. The third phase is to go and actually do the live fire portion. 
and that's where we'll get you in a position at the plate. I'll demonstrate again how I want you to shoot at the plate. You'll fire anywhere from three to five shots at a given point on the plate, and then I'll take an average of basically find out what the average center of that group is, and then make an assessment and essentially adjust the stock to adjust your point of aim and get you zeroed in. From there, once we have the dimensions where we want them on the stock, we end up coming in here and filling out this sheet. And this is, this sheet is really truly the product of the fitting. And in this whole sheet, it's really only those nine dimensions. You have cast, which is the right to left movement, or what you can associate with windage. Drop, which is up and down, and then length of pull, which is the distance from the front trigger to the middle of the butt. You have pitch, which is the angle of the butt, and then toe in and toe out. And I'll, I'll show you what that is too, as far as I can twist the stock and move the toe in or out of line with the, with the line of sight. And all these measurements are referenced from the line of sight. So that's the, the, the plane that the rib forms. And that's, you'll see this measuring tool when I put that on there. It, it straps to the barrels and makes a, a straight line that's perpendicular and parallel to the rib and comes back here and then I've got this this two-way measuring device and there's and I and I take three points so the data comes from this is the nose the face which is which is actually where you you put your face and the heel to start at very base principles the shotgun barrels are regulated in the case of a double gun shot strings and patterns come out of the barrels and converge at a certain point and, you, and they're they're regulated so those patterns try to stay as parallel uh, as they can for as long as they can. Actually from about 15 to about 30 yards the patterns are pretty much on top of each other. That then turns into what's called point of aim. So that means where you align that line of sight or that bead is where the where the patterns go. Really what we're trying to do here is pre-align your head so that your eye is looking right down the line of sight. So the first of the, the three technique issues is our stance. And what that is, is wherever you anticipate shooting a bird or breaking a target, you want to have yourself basically at a 45 degree angle. So if there was a line coming directly back from that target, the tips of your toes would be at a 45. And they should be about shoulder width apart. And we don't want them really pronated in or out. I'm not a fan of people tipping their front foot out because what that does is it, it, it will cause you to pull your hips and you'll square off of the target. which we, which we don't want. When we're at that 45 degree angle, it gives us kind of the widest field of fire as far as how we can move. It's a neutral position. The other thing that it does that's really important is it lines up your shoulder pocket properly. And uh, you're gonna hear me talk about anchors a little bit as far as there's a shoulder pocket anchor and a cheek anchor. And the shoulder pocket, when I say pocket, what I'm meaning is as, as your chest slopes off towards your shoulder, it hits that lowest point, right? And then at that lowest point, it starts to come back up into the ball of your shoulder. It's that lowest point. It's that crease that'll turn into your armpit. That's the pocket. We don't want the, the butt over on our chest. We don't want the butt over on our, the ball of our shoulder. We want it right here because that's the most stable spot. Much of this process we're gonna talk about is consistency, getting the gun in the same spot every time and keeping it there. And that's, that's why hitting that pocket properly is important. And again, if, if you think about it, that, that crease is naturally where that wants to go. If, if you do a bad gun mount and it ends up out here, it's incredibly unstable. And that's been my problem with the shotgun I've been using is it's, it's a much shorter length of pull like we've discussed. And it seems like anytime I'm missing on my anchor, it's on the bicep yeah. more than anything. And, and actually, it, it just you'll see in just a second, stance is a big issue. You're too squared off to the target. You can mount the gun and hit, hit your pocket, but go back to that base principle of we're trying to align our eye with the line of sight. You have to fat, you know, you know, radically roll your head over, and now your head's all the way cocked over, and you're looking out of one little corner of your of your shooting eye, and you have no peripheral vision up here, so you can't shoot like that. And I mean, you can just see it when I do it. Here's my here I'm at 45, perfect spot for that to go. The pocket's open. When I bring my arm around, it even it even exaggerates that pocket, makes it more stable. Now, as I turn this way, look what happens. You know, all of a sudden that pocket is facing over here. It's facing away from the butt. 
Now it's very hard for me to keep that gun in the pocket and it's very prone to slip out. So that's why maintaining that 45 degree stance is, is really important just to keep that, keep that pocket in a receptive position for the butt. We want this to become subliminal. It's like, you know, it's like the old karate kid, you know, Mr. Miyagi painting the fence or wax on and wax off. It's just something that you have to do repetitively. You know, it becomes muscle memory and subconscious and then all of a sudden you're going in on a point and you don't even realize what you're doing and all of a sudden, you know, you're you're leading with your front foot and you're at a 45 and you're way forward and you've got your, you've all of a sudden dropped your head down and you've done all that without even thinking about it. And that's why good instinctive shooters a lot of times will seem so fast. And it's not that their technical reflexes are any faster than anybody else's. They were anticipatory and they've done a third of the gun mount or, or facilitated it before the bird ever got close to going up. So the second thing is going to be uh, being weight forward, having weight on your front foot. And we want to have about 70-80% of the weight on your front foot and have a, a little bit of a forward lean. Not a crouch. You'll see people get like this. This is not putting weight on your front foot by kicking your hip out, but you know, ending up like this. It's a little bit of a lean. And how I tell people to feel that is to just get in your 45 degree stance, stand absolutely bolt upright, just like you're standing in line. And then with your, with your knees locked, now we're not gonna shoot like that, but you don't wanna have your knees bent too much. So just unlock your knees until they're elastic. And then pick your back foot totally up off the ground. And that, that will force you to put all your weight on that front foot. And if you if you keep your knees fairly, fairly straight, you'll feel that forward lean. And that's the lean you want. And it can feel a little awkward at first, right? Because you are leaning forward a little bit. But it's that's one of those things too. It may feel awkward at first, but after you do it for a little while, you'll really feel the benefit. And what that, what that truly does is that it aligns all of the structure of the front of your body, the ball of your foot with your knee, with your hip and with your shoulder, it turns the whole front of your body into a big pit. It takes way less energy to move yourself around like this. It's way more fluid. You're just, you're just moving less material around. And, and again, the other thing that the forward, that forward lean does a little bit is also kind of gets ready to segue into the next thing, which is, which is proper head placement. What that looks like is you have to have your head a little bit forward and ever so slightly tipped into the gun. Okay, so you have to be over the stock and you have to be a little tiny bit tipped in. How I like to tell people to feel that, if you want to know what it's going to feel like in a little bit of an exaggerated way, is take your finger, the first joint of your finger on your teeth, push up till you feel it stop, and then just touch the tip of your nose with your finger and move it back and forth. That's that head position. If the gun fits you properly and you've got your head in the right position, that gun will come down and away before it comes up. And it, you know, you'll feel it pull on your skin a little bit, but it will actually never make contact with your cheek. It's when you have your head up and not over far enough, you end up over here on the point of your cheek and that's where people get, get hurt. When you mount the gun, um, we want to make sure we're trying to minimize muzzle movement a little bit. In any case, you don't want to, you know, you don't want to have the muzzle up real high here and mount the gun and come down and then have to go back. You don't want it to be real low. So, so we want to have the muzzles in a neutral position. And then when we mount the gun, just think of it as a out, up, in, head down, and then you you'll get the sight picture I'm going to describe and you'll pull the trigger. The key is. Once you put your head down, you're done moving your head until you pull the trigger. You know, I don't want to see you mount the gun, get down, start looking at the rib and go, oh, I don't really like the way that looks and shift your head over or up or down or start wriggling the butt around, you know. You need consistency. The starting point yep. tells you where to go ultimately. Yep. Yep. And then, and, and, tr and, and ultimately when we get out there and start shooting, I want the stock, the architecture of the stock to dictate your head placement, not Right. your sight picture of, of what's going on with the rib. So again, those the, and that's that's kind of the, the, the start and the end of it. Okay. 45 degree angle, weight forward, have your head down and in, mount the gun, it's just out, up, in, anchor. So I've hit my shoulder anchor, I've hit my cheek anchor, I'm looking at the bead and I'm ready to pull the trigger. So. 45 and then go ahead and lock your knees completely. Just All lock right. them up just like you're standing. Yeah. Okay, now un uh, barely unlock them, just so they feel elastic, and then pick your back foot all the way up. 
and keep that weight. Don't have that weight be on your heel. Have it be on the front. And then again, have your have your head slightly forward and turned in. And that, that's terribly, ridiculously short for you. That's the process. <laughs> so go ahead and model one more time. I'm going to have a look at you. Okay. Yeah, that's way. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Okay, the second thing I'm starting to look for here is drop at heel. I think I'm probably going to drop that just a touch, but but that's not in bad position. Sometimes I'll see guys that, you know, if, if they've got a real long neck and low set shoulders, they'll mount the gun and it'll be up, you know, up yeah. like that, where where only a little bit of the, the butt is on their shoulder. And again, that, that has a lot to do with how you place your head. Yeah, that's uh, still hitting the bicep a little bit. That's a little more. Well, and, and, degrees, and I've got it. No, you're you're you go back to your 45. Okay. I might. I haven't done anything with the cast yet. A little gotcha. bit. And you might be pushing it out with your face because there isn't enough cast. So perfect. Okay, I'm gonna check the drop. Adjust the drop and cast. Now. One and a half, which is like that's you know pretty pretty status quo average I've got you at about a quarter cast it's amazing to me that most production guns for some reason I don't know if they think they're gonna to try to cover left-handed people and right-handed people but a lot of American guns are neutral and the a lot of the you know factory Italian guns end up being they have cast but it's just a little tiny bit right cast is the right to left so this this gun or this this mechanism hinges here and I can move the move the stock from right to left, so it's like a swing arm. So I'm taking, I'm essentially taking the plane or the the line of the comb, and I'm moving it out. I'm moving it away from the line of sight, and that allows you to move your head over. And again, I, I use the analogy of cask being similar to windage, because like if you're sighting in a rifle, you move the rear sight to the right the impact point goes to the right. In this case, your eye actually is the rear sight. By using the architecture of the stock to move your head over to the right, we change your point of aim. I hesitate to use rifle terminology with shotguns because I don't want people to think you ever shoot a shotgun like you shoot a rifle. But effectively, you can make the analogy that we're sighting this shotgun into you by moving your eye around like a rear sight. Anyway, let's see how we've, we're doing here. It's not. I'm gonna, I need to take a picture of that. It's like, okay. You see how much further that came into your pocket? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And it didn't feel like I was clipping the bicep as much either. Yep. It's like, it, it's still barely touching it on the way in, Yep. but it's not catching, if that makes sense. Yeah, like it's still hitting it, but it's not catching. Like it's just rubbing up against. Yeah, and, and again, I'm gonna I'm gonna tow that out a little bit too, because you know if you pull your shirt tight, if you you know, like if you look at my pocket, it's pretty linear. Mm -hmm. You know, your, yours is really angled off more to the side a little bit. Anyway, that's empty. I'm gonna have you take that again. Good. And I'm gonna take a picture now one more time. Okay, hold that. You can see you're really centered right over it. You might need a little more cast. Um, one of the things I'm looking for is your toe placement. And you really do somehow maybe think about your, your, your foot placement is mm -hmm. good, but you're twisting your upper body away a little bit. So just think about maybe having, you know, you know what I mean? So if you're more turned into the target, there, yep. So I, it, it I needs kind to be of like right here. Yeah, you, you're lifting right. too much, bro. <laughs> One more time. Yeah, see, that's that's a little better. You'll notice I didn't do a ton of eye dominance tests as far as, you know, toilet paper rolls and this, that, and the <laughs> other thing. Because people cheat those. You start thinking about it, and, yeah, and you're, you're, you're going to... adjusting. Whereas if I don't tell you, and I just tell you to start pointing, 
you can, you know, every time you did that, you centered those right over your, right over your right eye. And it's amazing, like that lady I was telling you about who was here, who I did that fitting for, she did that, and she would mount the gun, and she was shooting two eyes open, and while she was looking at me, the, the, the barrels would drift over, slowly drift over, end up completely under her left eye. We got about, she did that about three times, and it was just amazing, because you see people with eye dominance issues, but sometimes you see one who's like, shooting like truly right, right yeah. So she was shifting over, and I said, I said, do that a couple times and, and just totally close your left eye. So she did. And then of course the barrels were right under her right eye. And I and I didn't say anything. And I said, did you perceive anything different in that sight picture? She goes, no, it looked, looked the same every time I did it. And that's that's how it's how subliminal it is. Like she had no clue right. that, that, you know, the, the, the image that was inside her head was exactly the same when the barrels were over way over on the other side or right up under her right eye. The human the human optical system is an interesting entity. So the actual process, I want you to get lined up, get into your stance. I'm gonna load the gun. You're gonna do one check mount, and that's gonna kinda only be concentrating on where your head needs to be during that check mount. Don't really be looking at the target at all. Feel where your head placement needs to be. So I'm almost kinda looking, or with my eyes closed or just looking down, I'll mount the gun. I, that's where my head needs to be, okay? Now I've kind of got my head locked in that position or close to that position. Then I'll dismount the gun, do my second mount, concentrate on getting the bead in the center of the target and pulling the trigger. This does not need to happen fast. It needs to be fluid and it needs to be consistent. Speed comes afterwards where you've, when you've got your fitted gun and you're practicing and you get the muscle memory. You don't need to snap it up there and pull the trigger. Up, out, in, anchor, anchor, sight picture, there it is, boom. Get yourself into your ready position, muzzles neutral. Do one, do one check mount, feel where your head needs to be. Okay, good. Okay, good. Well, fired up all the Blue Jays. <laughs> Perfect. Again, let's make sure that we start with our Neutral. Neutral. There you go. Right, now am I doing the head check again on yep, the Yep, every, every time. Make it, every it, make it a, a process. There you go. Good. Pretty darn close to start. Yeah, that's and, and you know by eyeballing you, we got you pretty pretty darn close, close to begin with. A lot, a lot of times, it's nowhere near that close. Um, I mean, I mean, you know, most most of the dot is gone. So, but what I'm going to do now is make the first adjustment, which is kind of important because one of the biggest aspects of gun fitting is in going through the gun fitting process is assessing how you respond to the adjustments. So it's not just mathematics. You know, technically speaking, if I dropped you about three thirty seconds of an inch, mathematically that should pull your pattern down and drop you into that. Now you as an individual might respond to that just like that, or you might not. It might take more, it might take less. So Interesting. Yep. Everybody's different. And that's where, and, and you know, that's where gun fitting kind of turns into a little bit of a, a little bit more of an art because, you know, it, interestingly why we do this at 16 yards is why it's always been done at 16 yards is if you kind of do some of the, the trigonometry and draw opposing triangles, an inch to an inch and a half there equals about a sixteenth of an inch here. Now that's a rough approximation, yeah. but, it, but it's close. So if you look at where you were there, technically, Mathematically, if I were to lower the comb at your face an eighth, it should drop you down that, you know, four inches that we need, roughly. But you, again, you as an individual, yeah. that might we'll not see a form, a consistency. Yep. And I've, you know, sight picture all stays the same and hits it.
And see, this is the beauty with, so there's a hinge here and there's a hinge here. So, so if you think about it, I can move, you know, here's my paint roller I was looking for. I use the paint roller, like this is the nose, this is the heel. With that, I can move it like this. I can leave the heel dimension the same, which I did here, because I like where it's at in your pocket, but move your, i.e. try to move your head down by moving the nose down. I can do the opposite too. If I like where the nose is at, but I want to get it deeper in your shoulder pocket, I can move, just move the heel down. I can pin these numbers, or, you know, I can start doing things like this. You know, so I can move it like this and parallel. And, and all I did there was just drop it down about an eighth of an inch. And we'll see how you respond to that. Just close the gun and I, since I moved it, I do want you to do just do three or four mounts, but just really be conscious of mounting the gun and feeling your cheek get all the way down. You have a great gun mount. You really do. There you go. Yep. I feel it. I mean, it's night and day already. Yep, and you could even slow that mount down just a little bit. Again, again, you want to think of it like taking a taking a, a, a drink of a glass of whiskey. It's that speed. It's just that consistent. It. <laughs> yep. It's that consistent. We, we want consistency and, and being deliberate about it. We don't want to have it be a snappy kind of jumpy movement. Yeah. Yeah, that, that actually looks really good. It feels good. All right, let's give her a go. Okay, just do that Do that one check mount, kind of get your head where it needs to be, and then go ahead and center it. I'm gonna go spray paint that again. That last one was absolutely right on top. Grouse for dinner. <laughs> Good. That one was, you pulled that one a little bit yeah. to the left, but the, the, the horizontal was where I wanted it. And you can kind of see too, you know, you know, we, we you take an average of all that, we brought it's you down. Come down an inch or two at yep, least. Yep. Now I'm adjusting the cast. So I've, I've, I've roughly got the drop, you know, I've got them where I want them horizontally and I'm just shifting that stock over a little bit. So all of these dimensions up and down are exactly the same. I didn't change that. All I did was sweep the stock over to the, to the right a little bit. There you go, that, that was a clean, there it is. I think pretty much no pink on the first one. I think we're pretty much there, Nick. That, those, yeah. Perfect. I think that's a dead bird. Yeah, <laughs> yeah all, I mean. All three of those were right there. Yeah, yeah. That that's the first one. Almost took all the paint off. It of did. It. it did. So one thing that I was curious about after I finished the fitting process with Dell and and learning a little bit more about the importance of a consistent head mount and and gun mount overall was what can I do now besides just wait on the correct shotgun made to my dimensions. His suggestion was take the length of pool dimension that I got from the fitting process and see if there was a slip-on pad that would help, I don't know, divide the gap, so to speak. And uh, so that's what I did. I found this Packmeyer slip-on pad, it's called the Decelerator, and uh, it gets it close to the dimensions. It's not exact, but I'm at least practicing with something closer to what I'm gonna end up with when I get my new Upland Gun Company gun because one thing that was obvious after the fitting was just how drastic the length of pull has been for me because it was well over an inch difference on the shotgun that I've been shooting and the shotgun that I should be shooting. And so I wanted to go ahead and get a jump on the practice even though I don't have the shotgun made to that dimension, I can at least start getting some reps in 
with a longer length of pull. And so there are some tips and, and maybe some adjustments that you can do with your shotgun right after the fitting that could possibly help you sooner than if you were to go get a new shotgun made or maybe a, a gunsmith adjusting things for you. There's something as simple as maybe this, depending on what you're needing, uh, that can help you out with that so you can get a little creative. So I'm hoping that the gun fitting has an impact on this upcoming season and not just next season once I get the shotgun.